Okay, the integral. Okay, the purpose of this integral. Okay, the purpose of this video is to convince all the Cal2 teachers, please let your students use the DEI method. So maybe you have seen your students who have done this on your exam. When you are given this integral to the test, well, first they just put the D and also the I and they put the plus minus plus minus on the side and they differentiate x squared and then they integrate sine x. And this right here is actually not so bad and we stop right here and then this right here, it's also not so bad. And in fact, right here, we end up with our answer already. This times this, this times this, and this times that. And they will just write down the answer pretty quickly. Well, this times this, we get negative x squared cosine x, and this times that is plus 2x sine x, and then this times this is plus 2 cosine x, and of course, they still remember the plus c. Hmm, you know what? You should be happy if your students, you know, do this on the test, because it's actually a much nicer format than the traditional UDV setup for the integration by parts. Let me actually take some time to convince you guys that why this right here, even though it looks so magical, but it's actually not magic, it's just a better way to organize the work for the integration by parts. So, have a look right here. Here is the integral of x squared times sine x dx. Let's look at the traditional UDV setup. Let me pick u to be x squared, and let me pick dv to be sine x dx. And we know, we have to differentiate the u, so du is equal to 2x dx, we have to integrate the dv, so we get the v is equal to negative cosine, like this. Have a look, isn't this right here the same as the first two rows right here? And you see, right here, I have to write down the u, dv, du, whatever, a lot of times. And sometimes it's even worse because you might have to run through the integration by parts more than one time. So you have a lot of things to write down. Hmm, maybe you see already. You see right here? Remember, the formula for the integration by part is the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. uv is right here. So we just have to multiply them and we end up with this times that, which is negative x squared times cosine x and then minus the integral of v du. And v du is precisely the product of this row. And have a look. Isn't this the setup that's what we did over there? But again, that seems really magical. Don't worry, let me just continue right here, then you'll see the connection. So when we multiply this and that, let me actually put down the 2x right here and also the dx. And let me put down the v right here, which is negative cosine x, like this. And you might be wondering how come I didn't put the 2 or so the negative outside. Don't worry, let me explain. Because right here, this integral will still have to use integration by parts. And to do so, I will actually let u equal to 2x, and I will pick dv to be negative cosine x dx. Isn't this the same as what we did right here? Well, when you put on the u and dv, don't we need to differentiate this again? So we get du is equal to 2 dx, and don't we need to integrate this again? v is equal to the integral of that is negative sine x. Have a look. In fact, we just pretty much picked up from where we left off whenever we have to run through the integration by parts again. And the beauty of the DI method is that it's a very, very nice organization of the integration by parts. x squared, differentiate, and you get 2x, and then differentiate, you get 2, and then you differentiate, you get 0. This right here is actually the first stop of the DI method whenever you get a zero in the D column. And now you might be wondering, why do we have the plus minus plus minus on the side? Well, originally our integral is positive. And remember, for the integration by parts formula, we have the original integral, and then we have to have this minus another integral. Minus the integral of the product of this row. And that's precisely why we have the minus right here. And when we have more to do, such as this times that. Let me just put this down right here for you guys. This times this, we get 2x times negative sine x, but don't forget we still have to multiply this right here. And that's still going to be minus integral of this and that. So we have the 2, and then also the dx, and then right here we have the negative sine x. Yes, this is a negative integral, but inside of this negative, Negative times negative will give you the positive. 
And if you are in luck, if you have to do this one more time, then of course the sign will just alternate just like that. Right? Okay, so of course this right here is actually not so bad. You can you don't even need to do integration by parts, but why not? Right here, let me also put down u to be 2, and then let me put down dv to be negative sine x dx. Well, this right here, du will be 0, and integrating this, we get v is equal to cosine x. And lastly, we just need to do this times that. Then that's precisely what we have for the last diagonal. And of course, when we have 0, we stop, because technically, you have to do subtract the integral of this times that, but 0 times this is just 0, integral of 0 will give you the constant. So all in all, hopefully you can see this already, and then this right here, I don't really feel like if I should continue, but I think I should, because you never, uh, you just have to finish the integral, I think. So let me just do that, and then this is minus that, so it becomes minus, minus, uh -huh. and then we have the 2x, sine x, sorry, and then lastly, we have a minus, minus becomes a plus, right? And then we have 2 times cosine x, which is just 2 times of cosine x. That's exactly what I said. So 2 cosine x, and we are done. That's exactly what we got over there, isn't it? Yes, of course. So this is very, very nice. And again, the DI method, and technically, I have been using the term DI format a lot because I want to tell my students that this right here is just another format to organize your work for the integration by parts. More importantly, you should actually know the three stops of the DI format or the DI method. Right? The first stop is when you have a zero in the D column, and then let me show you guys another one, so you can really see that why the DI and also the UDV, they are equal. Equivalent. Now, let's look at the integral of inverse tangent. All right. So, for the DI setup, or the DI format, or the DI method, I will just put down a D and an I. And this is much better because under the D column, you are telling people that pick something to be differentiated. Under the I column, you are going to pick something to be integrated. On the side, just put on plus minus to get ready. Well, how many rows do I need? Technically, I don't know. But technically, I do know as well, but anyway. Right here, we're just integrating inverse tangent x. Do you want to put down the inverse tangent x right here? Of course not, because <laughs> you're just doing the same question already. Yeah. So we really have no choice but to differentiate inverse tangent. And then we are going to integrate 1. This is just as saying integrate dx. By the way, though, let me differentiate tangent x. Inverse tangent x, we get 1 over 1 plus x squared. Integrating 1, we get x, like that. Right? Cool. Now, shall we keep going? Can we differentiate 1 over 1 plus x squared? Yes. Can we do it again? Yes. But uh, will we ever get to 0? No. All right? Can you integrate x? Sure. 1 half x squared. Can you do it again? Yes. Can you do it again? Yes, but no, because you should have a sense of danger. Because, you see, this right here will never give you zero. When you have the sense of danger, then you should know that, huh, we should just stop right here, right? And the truth is, we stop right here because if you multiply this and that, you can actually integrate x over 1 plus x squared. So for the second stop, is that when you can, when you can integrate the product of each when you can integrate a product of a row, that's when you stop. But anyway though, as I promised earlier, this right here is actually precisely the same as the UDV format. Right here though, if you would like, you will just let u equal to what? Inverse tangent, and the u is the part that you are going to differentiate, and then dv is going to be dx, right? And you see, you just have to differentiate this part, U, uh, du is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. Now seriously, there are so many du dx whatsoever already. And then we have to integrate this, we get v is equal to x, right? And this is not so good because you don't have the plus minus sign to help you remember if you should plus the integral, you should minus the integral. But anyway though, this right here, you see, I will just multiply this and that, that's the first part of the answer. 
just like I will multiply this and that, namely uv, that will give you the first part of the answer as well. So all in all, we get x times inverse tangent x, and then minus the integral, because remember, when you multiply a row, when you multiply a row, this is still going to be an integral. And this right here is reminding you that it's going to be a minus integral. This right here doesn't even remind you. This is not so good, huh? But anyway though, this times that, we get x over 1 plus x squared dx. And right here we stop because when we multiply this and that, we can actually integrate this. So, let me just finish this for here for you guys. I will of course do the integral of this in our head. This right here will give us, whoops, not the equal sign, but rather just a minus. We have 1 half ln, and then we have 1 plus x squared, and because this is always positive, so you just need a nice parenthesis plus c, and you are done. So technically, what we are really doing is that when you have the d and also the i, when you have the plus or minus, right here, you are picking your u under the d column, just like what we did over there. And when you differentiate u, you get du, all right? And then you are just going to integrate dv, and then when you do that, you just get v. And then multiply this and that, that's the first part of the answer, and then minus the integral of u dv. With this, you should see that they are equivalent, right? And minus will show you guys the third step for the DI method, or the DI format, or the DI setup, whichever way that you want to call it. I really have to avoid the term DI method because people will think that that's a totally new method, but it's not new, all right? And let me just tell you guys that I didn't invent the DI method. A lot of people know this already. It's also called the tabless method, right? Well, but I do hope that I can popularize the DI method or the DI setup for you guys so that the students will like integration by parts a lot more. That's my goal. All right, the third step, example, the integral of e to the negative x cosine x dx. This is the repeating situation, right? And to do so, let me actually put on the D and the I right here. All right, so plus, minus, plus, minus, and all that stuff. As I told you, I really don't know how many times I need the plus minus, but actually I do know. But anyway, I'm going to be differentiating e to the negative x, even though you can put that right here as well, it doesn't really matter. But let me just integrate cosine x. All right, I can do this as many times as I want. Seriously, no big deal, right? Well, right here, integrating cosine, we get positive sine x, and then we get negative cosine x, and then again, we can integrate this as many times as we would like. But again, you need to have a sense of danger. So as long as you know all the three stops, the DI method is wonderful. Well, what's the third stop? Pay attention to the function part. Originally, we have e to the negative x times cosine x. Look, get this. Here we have e to the negative x, and here we have cosine x. Pay attention to the function part. If the function part in a row repeats, right? And I'm not talking about like if you have any constants, constants are okay. Just focus on the function part. If you see the function part repeat, you stop. So you actually don't need to go here, all right? So what exactly are we saying? This right here is equal to, again, this times this, this times that. So we get this times this, which is e to the negative x sine x. And then this times this, and you see now, Negative times negative times negative, we still get negative. So we have negative, and then we have e to the negative x times cosine x, all right? And lastly, do 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 But this is positive times negative, so we end up with a negative integral. Remember, when you multiply this and that, you still have to put it in an integral, right? The product of a row is still inside of an integral. Anyway, though, this right here is e to the negative x and then cosine x dx. I already took out the negative right here already, right? So now, this is the repeating situation. What do we do? We put this to the other side. So we end up with 2 integral of e to the negative x 
cosine x dx is equal to that, right? e to the neg dx, sine x minus e to the neg dx, cosine x. And what do we do with the 2? We don't like the 2. Divide everybody by 2. So ladies and gentlemen, e to the, sorry, integral of e to the neg dx times cosine x dx, d, d equals sine. You have not seen that before, right? dx, this right here is equal to 1 half times this, e to the neg dx sine x minus 1 half e to the neg dx cosine x, like this, right? Just like that. All right, so hopefully after this video, you feel better of teaching the students the DI method so that the students will like the integration by parts a lot more. Thank you guys so much for watching though. And I do remember to put on the plus C, but I just don't want to, just to make sure that you guys are still watching, right? Anyway, that's it.